the standards and principles of journalism have been that of fairness, accuracy, integrity, and most importantly, objectivity. However, we will argue with the help of journalism critics and research studies that distorted and interpreted news is becoming more of a reality. Subjectivity in the media is now seen as inevitable, leading to public distrust and the questioning of the journalism industry itself. This conjures up the question, what has journalism become? We'll respond by exploring subjectivity and whether or not it's really that bad. And if it isn't, what good does it bring to Canadian journalism? Journalists and broadcasters have a set of policies and guidelines that they must follow in writing about and telling the news to the public. The public expects journalists to portray the world in a fair, accurate, and overall objective manner because they are the primary transmitters of information between what is occurring in the world and the knowledge of the public. Two primary principles of the press are both the freedom of the press and along with this comes the responsibility of the press, which are emphasized by the Canadian Broadcast Corporation. The CBC notes that freedom of the press is a principle that is standard to democracy, and that although broadcast journalism has become a powerful and influential part of information media, and thus shares the freedom, it must still be aware of the consequences that follow. The broadcasting policy, responsibility of the press, is important because it's a broadcasting body for the public and their duty is to be socially responsible. The CBC notes that trust in the media is of crucial importance and there is a great need of an effective media system as well as public confidence in that system. What does appear as ever prominent today is subjectivity in journalism intensifying, as well as the notion of objectivity diminishing and becoming a disbelief rather than an accredited, noble way to tell the news. It was once appropriate for a news organization to present the news in an accurate and straightforward fashion, free of opinion and partisanship. However, today, subjectivity is becoming more apparent, and when it's not intended to be, it is still suggested and easily distinguished by the public. The media strategically put together their stories and do incorporate biases to produce a slanted story, even if this is not outwardly visible. Just as Brian McNair, author of An Introduction to Political Communication, says, when addressing a political theme, the feature writer must convince a reader of his or her objectivity as a journalist, while at the same time pressing a personal agenda. McNair also reveals that even supposing a reporter claims that he or she is objective, they may suggest their subjectivity in whether it be a facial expression or their tone of voice. example of agenda setting in the media is the Chapel Hill study done on part by Shaw and McCombs during the 1968 presidential election that proved that the media indicate which issues were to be thought about and which were given the greatest emphasis by the candidates. This conclusion was drawn from the apparent strong correlation between relative media emphasis and voters' beliefs about the importance of the same list of issues. The gatekeeper hugely influences what goes into the media. This concept dates back to 1949 when Kurt Lewin determined that the flow of any news items would be through certain channels and more important that certain places within these channels would serve as gates through which given news items might or might not be admitted. The media is full of gatekeepers filtering the news. Human beings are the writers and human beings are the reporters. Therefore, the story is told through the human being and inevitably choice and deliberation goes into this process, discounting what would otherwise be objectivity in journalism. It is mentioned in David Manning White's case study on the gatekeeper that in almost every case where he had some choice between competing press association stories, Mr. Gates preferred the conservative. 
There are always gatekeepers in a news organization. Someone is always deciding what gets told to the public and essentially contributing to setting the agenda of the public. Whether it is the journalists themselves or it's those who filter their stories, the stories are in no way untouched and purely objective. We will now look at two different perspectives that critique the journalism process and its claim to truth. What both of these perspectives have in common is their argument that absolute knowledge of the truth and a perfect replication of reality is, in fact, impossible. The first journalism critic, Marcel Burisma, argues in his article that the journalist's claim to truth is the main feature of journalism discourse. However, this discourse of truthfulness masks an awkward reality, that it's impossible to know all of the facts. Therefore, Burisma states that news is a social construction that constitutes reality. He argues that journalism should be viewed as a performative discourse, as this type of discourse is designed to persuade readers that what is described is real, which, by successfully doing so, transforms an interpretation into truth. News is made real because journalists say it's real. This performative power is further drawn from the journalist's use of familiar textual conventions, formats, styles, and practices that the public subconsciously relate to authority and truthfulness, even if the actual content of the news article is not all true. The second perspective is presented by author and researcher Bernard Peruskin, who challenges the traditional realist and observer independent ideology with an opposing constructivist theory. Peruskin states that the constructivist perspective opens up a different view of the core activity of journalism, the selection of information, which in actuality is not a passive act, but rather one of active construction, a form of giving meaning and guided interpretation. Therefore, the constructivist critics reject the realist ideal of objectivity and instead advocate a reinterpretation that sees journalistic objectivity as a strictly observer-dependent construct. The media reinforce social norms and are capable of establishing a national consensus, according to Philip McGregor from the University of Bournemouth, a media school in the UK. This national consensus is first initiated by the journalists themselves and further developed by those that they choose to incorporate into their story. He also goes on to say that the media do not have neutral positions, as they are always putting together political and cultural attitudes, and they are formulating certain beliefs and promoting certain ways of thinking in the media, and preserving this by way of the ongoing press. It's imperative to keep in mind, however, that there are policies set up for broadcasting endeavors such as the Canadian content regulations of the CRTC that ensure Canadian culture is emphasized and sustained predominantly in Canadian programming. Robert Armstrong, President of Communications Media Inc. in Montreal and author of Broadcasting Policy in Canada, details these regulations, which include that Canadian television programming must be comprised of at least 60% Canadian content through the span of 12 months for a day of broadcasting. Similarly, there are various laws that are existent for journalists that potentially restrict their freedom in which journalists have to piece together a truly objective story. Some of these laws include Elections Act, Anti-Terrorism Act, and privacy laws and access to information. James E. Mueller, highly experienced and credible journalism professor at the University of North Texas, thinks that partisan journalism should be the ultimate goal of the press, and that the public don't trust the press who claim they are objective. Therefore, what is important at this point is not objectivity, but is honesty in regards to the biases of those who are working in the media. Mueller also makes a critical point that even though the press is subjective, it is likely that readers have a healthy skepticism rather than a cynical belief that the news is biased, but the reporters pretend it isn't. But wait, is the press willing to be honest and admit they are subjective? From the journalist's point of view, the problem of abandoning the objectivity norm and confessing that journalism is unable to accurately represent reality is that it would undermine their authority. Journalist Dina Ibrahim acknowledges this obstacle and states that the challenge is to find reporters, editors, or producers who will be willing to jeopardize their own credibility and careers by being publicly honest and open about the subjective nature of the choices they make in their profession. Admitting to and thus embracing the subjectivity will lead to higher levels of media literacy among journalists and audiences alike.
It's not possible to fully determine what the future holds for journalists and whether or not objective journalism will entirely disappear. However, we feel that subjectivity, as it is ever growing and impossible to read in the media, can be a mediated truth rather than a purely opinionated and sleazy way of telling the news. The alternative, objective way of telling the news, even though it has certain beneficial policies and standards, is rather unlikely and irrelevant in today's media. Thank you.